Impeachment. See or no? Dies in the house. Exclusively on Least Coast Radio. The views and opinions expressed on this podcast are that of my own and are not of my employer. until November of 2020 to get our act together as a country, as a nation to correct this injustice. And the biggest injustice in the world was allowing a foreign power to install a criminal into the White House and turn an administration into a fascist crime syndicate. That must be corrected. And we only have a little, there's only one more election we have to correct it, or this whole thing is over. If you don't know what Staten Island is, it's like New York's abortion that lived. I never met any of the founding fathers, but I'm sure if they were listening to Least Coast Radio right now and brand new episodes of Dies in Your House, they would agree with the sentiment. And you can follow us on Twitter, at Least Coast Radio. Get us on Patreon, at Least Coast Radio. Vote. Blue Wave 2020. Let's make it happen. Least Coast Radio for the least heard voices. Every weekend. We here on Least Coast Radio are trying to fight the rising tide of fascism. The noun fascism is usually defined as a governmental system led by a dictator having complete power, forcibly suppressing opposition and criticism, regimenting all industry, commerce, etc., and emphasizing an aggressive nationalism and often racism. Yeah, we don't we don't want any of that in America. So we gotta we gotta stop it. We gotta put out the fire now. Stand down, boys and girls. As liberals, not even as liberals, as Americans, as patriots. As people that like democracy, the only thing we can do right now to fix our country is use our weapons. And our weapons are our voices, our handmade signs, and social media. Get the message out there. Voting. Voting is key. Elections have consequences. If you don't know what Staten Island is, it's like New York's abortion that live. Hey, yo, who's in the house dies in your house. What is the word, peeps? What goes on? It's Easter Sunday. I'm Jay Porks, and we are back here on Least Coast Radio with another action-packed edition of Dies in Your House. What is Dies in Your House? It's been several things. But what it is for the next, let's say, 18, 17, 17, 18, 19 months or so, what this is now is it's a campaign to get you to vote. And you may not necessarily be you who's listening to this, but there are a lot of people that didn't vote. And America has a problem with people wanting to complain about how our system is, but not participating in democracy and getting out to vote. So we're gonna, we talk about a lot of things. This po- I, I'll admit it. Listen, before 2016, my podcast may have been funny. You know, we had fun on the pod funny anecdotes, I was a waiter, I was slinging pasta, you know what I'm saying, we, we had fun, but after November 2016, we, we had to realize I could not take my platform and just watch the country burn and think that that's okay, I couldn't sit back and watch my country burn and say, you know what, I'm just gonna ignore it because it doesn't affect me, because it affects all of us. And that's why it was hard for me 
to get a job. That's why I was unemployed since June 13th, because I'm so liberal. And listen, I'll say it again, like I said at the top, like I slipped in, that's going to be there every week, that little, that little nugget, that little 18 second clip. The views and opinions expressed on Dies in Your House and on Least Coast Radio are not that of any employer, of my employer, of any employer that I'm going to have in the future, of any employer that I've had in the past. This is my, this is me. This is my mission when I am clocked out of work. This is what I do in my spare time. I want to save America. I know I can't do that on my own, but you know what I could do? I can beg you to vote. I can beg you to find someone that didn't vote. And I can beg you to use your platform. And we're going to use the strongest weapons we have. Our voices. Our handmade signs. And social media. Because we don't want this country falling into an authoritarian, in a, an authoritarian state. An authoritarian dictatorship. We don't want fascism to rise in America. We don't want that to be a thing. The noun fascism is usually defined as a governmental system led by a dictator having complete power, forcibly suppressing opposition and criticism, regimenting all industry, commerce, etc., and emphasizing an aggressive nationalism and often racism. Yeah, that's not a thing. That's not a thing that we need going on in America. That's not a thing that has ever worked once for humans to, you know, progress in a society. It's not a thing. Now, if you want to tell me, Jay, you're taking things a little too seriously, comparing America to World War II Nazi Germany. Jay, that's a bit much. Well, I don't know. There's brown people locked in cages away from their families, separated from their families for coming to this country to try to not, you know, they're not coming here to get rich. They're coming here to survive, to live. They're coming here so their government doesn't kill them by famine, by, you know, soldiers. Listen, don't, Guatemala, Honduras, we don't know what's going on over there. Well, we do know what's going on. Bad stuff. Bad enough where people are wanting to walk hundreds of miles to get away from it. You know what I'm saying? Like, I pay an extra $4 so I can take the express bus into the city instead of taking the regular local bus for two seventy five dollars because I don't want to get on the ferry because I like uh, comfort. So, like, it would have to get really bad here for me to want to walk hundreds of miles to get away. We are locking people up. Don't tell me that all of this stuff, do, that this stuff do, is not the, the seeds planted for a fascist society. And right now there is a fascist crime syndicate in the White House. And numero uno, priority one right now is to remove criminals from the White House. And I'm not talking about when somebody says, oh, all politicians are crooked. Jay, they're just going to take your money. They're not going to do that. They're beholden to donors. They, you, Your vote doesn't count. I'm not talking about people who are politicians who you perceive to be criminals when they just really pop politics is dirty and filthy and ugly. I'm talking about criminals, okay? I'm talking about people that have a counterintelligence investigation opened against their presidential campaign. I'm talking about people that conspired with a foreign government to hack... To hack... I'm talking about a political party had a campaign for president. And they conspired with a hostile foreign power to hack and disseminate the hack the emails from the other political party disseminate them across the internet un you know out of context basically in order to help that political party conspiring with this hostile foreign power take control of America that's what happened 
and all of the Mueller report, all of the redactions, whatever. I, you know, I read enough of it to understand that we have a crime syndicate going on. The only thing the Mueller report, Mueller report proves that would be good for anybody working or associated with this orange clown is that the Department of Justice and Robert Mueller, apparently, they saw the memo that said a sitting president can't be indicted, and they kind of said, you know, even though it's not law, let's try to follow that anyway. So basically, if they didn't find out that Trump killed somebody, it criminality and the past and the past like 60 seconds of my podcast might have been my computer froze for a second anyhow I hope that didn't affect it anyhow we have a fascist crime syndicate in the White House we have to remove them that's priority one so we waited for the Mueller report now unless Trump actually killed somebody you know I doubt the FBI was gonna go in there and arrest him but at the same time all this did was provide a roadmap for impeachment. And in any normal society, that's what you would get. Unfortunately, we are not in a normal society. We are in Trumplandia. This is, you know, America TV. Like that's what this is. This is America, the reality television show. And it's disgusting. And I could spend my time going up to everybody with a red hat or everybody on Twitter with hashtag MAGA or whatever. And I can spend, I can waste my time. And politicians can waste their time going on Fox News and having town halls appealing to absolutely zero voters who are going to vote Democrat. Zero people that have any chance of voting Democrat. The only reason you would have a town hall on Fox News is if this time when you didn't get the fucking... You didn't get the... What is it? When you didn't get the candidate, when you didn't get the... The nomination... Can't, I'm on six cups of coffee. I can't believe the word nomination slipped me. The only reason you would go on Fox News is a preventative measure for when you don't get the Democratic nomination to run as an independent. I'm just saying. Nobody would do that. Nobody watching Fox News... The only, they're not interested in that. That is a black hole. And that's because of the fairness doctrine. And that goes back to the 80s. The Republicans have been working hard. Like they did the Reagan thing. Reagan was like, you know, an actor. And they thought, yeah, we can, there's a good idea. Like they got, but he was the governor. He, he had... He held elected positions. I'm not saying he knew what he was doing. I'm just saying that at least he, you know. But this idea of putting in a puppet and okay, we're going to put somebody in. And then they're just going to listen to us. And then Newt Gingrich, with the partisanship in the 90s against Bill Clinton. And listen, I know Bill Clinton did some stuff and he got impeached. And, you, you know, I can bring up all the quotes from Lindsey Graham saying that the president doesn't need to commit a crime to be impeached. He basically just needs to do something that, you know, turns off the American people because they voted for him. That's, I mean, that's a clip from Lindsey Graham when there's a Democratic president. But now, he's all about, you know, all about the Trumpy. And I don't get it. And I don't understand. I don't like phonies. I don't like people that say one thing and then do another. I don't like people that say something to me. Say, oh, I love this song, and then go to the next guy and say, man, I hate that song. Like, who are you... I mean, don't flip-flop. So I got notes... Because inside baseball here, I had a couple of false starts in this podcast. Again, like six cups of coffee. I ran over myself a bunch of times starting to record it. So then I stopped and I took some notes. And I'm going to look over at these notes just uh, as a guide to me. So just... Uh, Again, like, like wait, you don't waste your time going up to your family members who wear red hats and support Trump and try to get them to admit that they did something wrong or get them to change their mind. 
that's time that you're wasting. You're wasting that time. And you could use that time talking to some kid who's about to graduate high school and let him know, listen. Because listen, I don't care what, if you call yourself conservative or you call yourself liberal, whatever it is. Young people, young people, the stuff they want in their lives, in their lives. And listen, yesterday was 420. Again, I'm employed now, so I don't know what 420 is. Never heard of it. I don't know. I'm kidding. I'm, of course I know what it is. But like, if you saw all the Democratic candidates tweeting about legal, maybe not legalizing, but moving legalization forward in a state-by-state -state basis, talking about how having a plant ha be as illegal as heroin is just crazy and laws should change. You had a bunch of Democratic presidential candidates coming out and tweeting and, and saying stuff about that yesterday on 420 appealing to the young voter because per this person graduating high school oh, you want a b and c okay then you gotta vote democrat it doesn't matter if you're actually a conservative like we need to fix our country right now and people wearing red hats are not interested in that so do there's no point wasting your time with them let them have their win what we're talking about here today is impeachment and you know i'm I'm not a constitutional lawyer, so I have not really, you know, my opinion is my opinion, and I'm going to give it to you, and then I'm going to point to some, I'm going to point to facts. Like, the, the Mueller report, it does three things. It lays out clear conspiracy, it proves crimes were committed, and... It makes a clear case for impeachment in any regular society. But we're not in a regular society right now where you can tell Republican senators that this guy committed a crime, we have to impeach him, and you can just say, nah, I don't know about that. But, like, what about my 2020 re-election bid? But what about the tax bill? What about taking health care away from people and locking up brown kids in cages well we want to continue to do that so we need our puppet leader now they needed to enlist help from a foreign power this time and that foreign power funneled money through the nra but it's all right it's all right i mean it's not all right but all of the all of that stuff is still under investigation in several different parts of the country SDNY has a lot of it. And I know we're sick of hearing people say that. I'm sick of hearing people say that. Sounds like a cop-out to me. But what we have to understand is that, first of all, we can't analyze every line that Nancy Pelosi says. Every time she says a word, we can't analyze it for what it is. Oh, this is why... This is why nothing. There is nobody in the House of Representatives who is more qualified to be Speaker than Nancy Pelosi. So if she says, listen, impeachment's a big thing, I'm not going to scream my television, oh, you're so stupid. No, she knows more about it than I do. And here's what you need to do. Go on Twitter and follow at Sally Albright, okay? She is good people. She has some amazing tweets. Like, I agree with a lot of stuff she says. A couple weeks ago... I was reading, there was a little bit of a, I suggested that people go read the Bernie bro thread that she had. She has a lot of, so I'll go to it right now. And this is from yesterday, at eight, uh, this is from 420 at 8.05 p.m. And this is, quote, Sally Albright. There is a very real chance we do not have the votes in the house to impeach. If you trust Nancy or nothing else, you can rest assured she knows where every single one of her votes are. If she's not willing to bring up articles of impeachment, please consider that that might be why. Continue. You might be, you might fe fervently believe Trump should be impeached from the bottom of your heart, but that doesn't mean the American public feel the same. No member is going to vote to impeach unless their voters want it. It's magical thinking to assume we automatically have the votes. And it's, con it's constitutional. The Constitution specifically dictates that impeachment is a political process adjudicated by Congress instead of a legal process adjudicated by SCOTUS. 
that's done to make sure that the American people are on board with it. So, basically, it's not about... Because everybody, we can all agree that these are repeat impeachable offenses. But are we really in a place where we want to risk doing that and firing up people wearing red hats? Because I'll tell you this, being a child, when Bill Clinton was getting impeached, you know, like... He, his approval rating went up. We don't need that. We don't need people, tri like, because there are a lot of contrarians, me included. Like, I don't watch the Hangover movies because all you people say that they're the greatest movies ever. I'm sick of fucking hearing that. You tell me something is so great, I am not going to, I'm not going to believe you. Just based on, you know, the sheer mass volume of people telling me one thing and I've been let down too many times. But, like, the people that are like, you know, this guy's a criminal, maybe if they see, like, impeachment and they see it fail, that might not weaken this asshole. Therefore, instead of wasting your breath talking about constitutional things that elected officials will be discussing on Monday afternoon or evening, what you could do is take that energy and use that to do what I'm doing right now in this podcast. Advocate for voting. Give money to your campaign. Now, I also want to get... I I also think they should impeach him. I mean, I want to impeach. Elizabeth Warren said... Yesterday came out and was like... Well, Friday came out and said, you know... I think the House should bring up articles of impeachment. Now... Yes... Because he committed impeachable offenses. But when you stand back and think about it. Then that turns the Democratic primary into questions about impeachment. When it should be questions about issues. Because if you talk about issues to people. Nobody's going to vote conservative if they actually hear the issues. If they're not conflicted by a hostile foreign power. You know, if they're not conflicted by, you know, uh... uh Hashtag journalism, you know, WikiLeaks, whatever it is, putting out stuff. If they're not conflicted by troll bots, if they know what what news is news, and what news is fodder, if they knew that, if they were more informed about policy, then they'd go vote. But the problem is, is that people don't vote. And if they do vote, they base it on a personality contest. Though no, I don't like Hillary Clinton. Why? What'd she do to you? Well, in the 90s, you know, Bill Clinton and the crime and, like, the crime bill or whatever, like, he, he co-signed it. And, like, or whatever, whatever the case is, like, it happened when he was president or whatever. Dude! She's the first lady. They don't actually do shit. Like, you know what I'm saying? She tried to work on healthcare and didn't work back then. Healthcare. So Hillary Clinton tried to give you healthcare, and that made you sit out the election. That's utterly ridiculous. Your vote doesn't count? You're an asshole if you think that. The people that say their vote doesn't count are the same people that say they're independent. There is no independent. You want things. You are not a blank canvas. There is no independence. You have things you want. So therefore, you're gonna choose between who you want. The people that say they're independent, that say their vote doesn't count, are the same people that ran around 20 in 2003 and 2004 calling themselves truthers, second American government flew planes into their own buildings and killed their own people to go invade Iraq or whatever it was. That's what though th those are the same people. Don't get it twisted. It's a flavor of the week. It's the new birtherism. You gotta vote. Like, for instance, I, you know, Staten Island, very conservative. And again, I'm not talking about the amount of registered voters we have here, because we most certainly have more registered Democrats than registered Republicans. 
because there's more registered Democrats than registered Republicans in America because America is way more liberal than everybody thinks it is. I voted for Max Rose for Congress. Democrat. But he's like moderate, you know, because he had a win in Staten Island. I'm looking at his Twitter. I didn't, I did not see anything yet. I want to see how he feels about impeachment. Now, obviously, he can't bring it, but you know, it's gonna be, it's gonna be important to see on Staten Island. It's gonna be very important to see where Max Rose falls on the subject of impeachment. Now, you'd think since he's moderate, he'd be against impeachment, but I think. He hate like he really hates Nancy Pelosi. Like didn't vote for her for speaker. So I'm thinking if Nancy Pelosi is against impeachment, he might be for it, or he might find some way to make it sound like she's out of touch or something. And I'll be upset with him about it, and I'll call his office. And three weeks later, I'll get a, an email saying from the office of Max Rose, thank you for reaching out. But listen, you go make your voices heard. Because listen, again, I just talked about it. 420 just passed, right? Do you think that marijuana is as bad as heroin? Well, right now, the the according to the law, it is. Now, do you think that's ludicrous? I do. So does every Democrat in the world. But you know who doesn't think that's ludicrous? Republicans. Why? I don't know. But that's a reason to vote them out. Do you want to continuously see schools get shot up? See children murdered? Have kids, have kids get older and have the constant memory of their friends getting killed in the classroom? A time of innocence. School. Children. Getting killed. Do you want people to be, have guns like who are prone to, who are more likely to commit acts of violence? Or do you want uh, some sort of real background check system that actually works? Okay. Republicans don't. So you'll vote Democrat. Do you want women at the end of the day to control their bodies and be allowed to decide what they do with their bodies, with their health? Or do you want that decided by old white men? Okay. Same. Republicans want it controlled by old white men. So... If you respect women, you'll vote Democrat. It's not hard. The hard part is getting people out to vote. The hard part is avoiding television, like avoiding the news as a, a, a dramatic television show and actually viewing the news as the news, a place to get information. There, It's not a storyline. Like the 2016 election was like... You know, a storyline that went from, like, WrestleMania to SummerSlam. That's what it felt like. It was like, oh, peaks and valleys and this and that. But Hillary Clinton had policies. Trump had racism. But people, the policies may have been, I don't want to say, like, people are simple. But maybe they were a little harder to grasp for people you know, who live in red states who are less educated than a lot of Amer- than, than, you know, people- Americans that go to college and stuff and more prone to read books. It's just how it is. That's just how it is. So, maybe this time, we need to figure out ways to dumb it down. And that's what, we're, I mean, that that's what I'm doing. That's why I'm, I got this podcast that I'm not playing clips of like, you know, people on the news talking. I'm telling you how it is coming from me because I'm not a very smart guy. I'm not, you know, a Rhodes Scholar. I'm not saying I'm stupid, but I'm not a Rhodes Scholar. But I'm thinking it, whatever I understand, if I could pass that along to people like me and, you know, they hear what I'm saying... Then we can actually have some success in saving democracy. But right now, we have to put this fire out in America. And in 2020, gotta vote Democrat. Jay Porks dies in your house. Exclusively on Least Coast Radio.